everybody, Tom Edward Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So on this one, we're going to be getting into the tropics here. It's going to be a pretty quick outlook here. As far as the Atlantic's concerned, things are starting to pick up. We do have three disturbances that we're watching for a chance of development. The two areas in the yellow are pretty low chances, and I would expect them to continue to remain that way. Especially this system here with this is however going to do is increase shower and storm activity over the gulf coast even parts of the southeast over the next few days nothing uh too out of out of sorts there but this system right here and this system right here i'm watching a little bit more closely especially this system here in the orange where there's a 40 percent chance of development at this current point in time it's also going to be heading towards the caribbean here where waters are very warm wind shear is light and there's a little bit less in the way of Saharan dust. Still pockets of dry air here, but the environment here is relatively favorable in comparison to the main development region where this third disturbance is. I don't give this a great chance of developing. It can happen if that Saharan dust backs off. The dry air here has been choking out systems that have had any sort of shot at developing, and hence why we've had such a below average season. Or at least that's my thoughts. There's other... Uh, there's other uh, factors in play here, but I mainly think that that's going to be the big reason as to why we haven't had a big season like previously forecast. So looking at the current storm tracks right here, this is the system I'm most interested in right now. And notice right now, it looks like there could be a Yucatan impact. And then after that, it's really questionable as to where this goes over the next 10 days. Could get back into the Gulf here and make a northward turn into the Gulf Coast. It could just make a secondary landfall towards Mexico right now. Very unclear as to what happens with this. A big factor is going to be if this does indeed develop, which I, I would say I would, I would expect it to, uh, it really is just going to matter how quickly it strengthens, what are the upper level winds like at that point in time, and just where will it end up going as a result. This other system right here, if this third disturbance does indeed strengthen, I would expect it to head out to the north, probably be out to sea and be a non-factor to land at this point. This would be what we call a fish storm. It's not even going to get close to Bermuda. But also the environment here is so messy. There's so much dry air and Saharan dust and wind shear further up to the north that this will probably inhibit anything from developing. So hard to say if this will end up becoming our next name storm or a name storm at any point. And I'm pretty much am seeing the same thing with the GFS ensemble as well. We go ahead and take a look. Pretty much a similar deal here. Here's our here's our current point of interest right here. Business picks up, of course, as we get into the next week. There's our system there. There's our other disturbance here. And GFS ensemble doesn't really pick up on that other system really turning into much of anything, so I'm not concerned about that. The thing is, though, interestingly enough, especially as we go forward, is that you do see other pieces of energy coming off of the West African coast, as I mentioned before. Problem is, there's so much dry air over here that it's going to be a problem for these storms to try and develop. And here is a look at said dry air right here. It's these big areas in the brown that we mentioned before. Notice over towards the Caribbean and Gulf, a lot more moist atmosphere, prime environment for tropical development. And that's why I think there's a higher chance for that to develop. And ends up staying persistent as we go forward here. Look over towards the Gulf. You hardly see any brown patches over here. Maybe over towards Cuba at the most. But over at the main development region, look at how much Saharan dust is pouring into the region here. So it's going to be a constant battle between the warm moist air that will be coming off South Africa coast and the Saharan dust coming from North Africa. That's going to be the determining factor as to what might happen next. And it's very unclear as to what could happen. Now, considering the fact that this is the GFS operational, it's going to have a little bit of a different appearance from what the GEFS or GFS ensemble is looking like. So something to pay attention to here is, and I saw this out the corner of my eye when I was first looking at it. Of course, like, we, like I said before, Saharan dust is a big factor. But watch the little pressure here that starts to ramp up as we go further along. This is that system that was over here at the beginning of the model run. Now, depending on what this does, it could ramp up from here. And then after that, we get another system that forms right around here, just off the coast. A lot of dry air is going to affect it if it does indeed form. Of course, this is at the middle, the uh, end of the model run here. So not really 
not really going to put a lot of uh, weight behind this, but definitely going to be keeping an eye on this. Like I said, it kind of looks like it's a bogus run at this point, but considering the fact that we're even seeing it on an operational run, not going to rule it out either. But this is another big factor as to what could happen over the Atlantic over the course of the next 16 days here. It's wind shear. Wind shear is going to be kind of light, if I'm being honest. Outside of the Saharan dust here, right here in this little corridor, our main development region, wind shear is light, even lighter over towards the Gulf, even lighter towards the Caribbean. And as time goes on, we're going to continue to see that trend. In fact, the wind shear actually improves a little bit in most of the regions here, with the exception of the Gulf, where we have some troughing going on over the U.S. As time goes on, though, that environment itself also looks like it becomes a bit favorable once again as we go further along here so like i said multiple moving parts to this outlook here but really the big question is how much is the saharan dust going to affect what's ahead here because this is actually peak hurricane season that we're in right now and we're only five name storms in considering we had a forecast of about 20 or so it's pretty crazy to think about but I've seen crazy Septembers before and crazy Octobers even, so let's not rule thing, anything out just yet here. We're looking good. Let's hope we can stay that way. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, do smash that like button, decimate that subscribe button, obliterate that share button as well. Definitely do that, and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Till then, take care and have a good rest of your Sunday.